When it comes to a balanced portfolio, dividend ETFs are a big part of this. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at the SCHD and the VYM. Now, I got a lot of comments on the dividend video and the portfolio that we have ourselves for holding 25% of that portfolio in SCHD and not holding it in the VYM. And which one is really better out of these two? That is what we're gonna kind of explain in this video today. So looking at first, we're gonna kind of do the comparison. When you look at the SCHD and the VYM, they are both two of the largest and most popular dividend ETFs that we do have on the market. However, because of growth funds, we have seen these lag a little bit in the market. When you look at value and dividend um, counterparts in comparison to growth, dividend stocks have lagged a bit, but they are something that never goes out of style. And when you look at long-term, they have done incredibly well. Even looking at the S&P 500 overall in the past 50 years, dividend yielding ETFs have actually outperformed it which it says in here that dividend paying stocks posted 9.2%, annualized total return versus the annualized total return of 7.75 of the equal weighted S&P 500. So again, over the course of 50 years, we've seen ups, we've seen downs. A lot of the dividend stocks stay pretty consistent for the, the two companies. Now looking at the comparison, so these two are very, very similar. They have a lot in common. When you look at the SCHD, it is in US dividend stocks that have a total return in the US dividend or 100 dividend index. The VYM is in high yield dividend stocks, so very similar. Both of them right around 50 billion in assets, both of them yielding a 0.6. That is right, a very, very low, low cost ratio with both of these, but they are identical which means if you have $10,000 invested in here, you're paying $6 in fees per year, which is kind of crazy, even with a 5% year over year return in a decade. So looking at 10 years, you would pay 77 bucks. So how do they differ? This is the big part of it. When you look at the SCHD, it only holds roughly 100 stocks and the top 10 stocks that it holds accounts for 40% of this portfolio. Now that is very something to really take note because the SCHD does only hold a few stocks, 100 stocks, 10% of those, again, make up 40% of the portfolio. Now, when we look at some of the top holdings, when you look at Broadcom, um, when you look at Texas Instrument, definitely some really big ones, but Coca-Cola, Pepsi, um, Abby and Emgen, which are two healthcare leaders, um, they've also known to pay an incredible amount of dividend. Most of all of the dividends that they are, the stocks that they hold, have a dividend yield of 2 to 2.7%, which is really good when it comes to the dividend. So how is this different than the VYM? Now, the Vanguard ETF is more diversified than the SCHD. It actually holds 466 stocks. That's right, SCHD is around 100, the VYM is 466, which of course makes the diversification of that VYM really, really, I mean, 4X, almost going 5X, the diversification that we have just holding that SCHD. And of course, the top 10 holdings of this one is only 25% of the fund, which is a big difference when you look at the SCHD, who was holding 40% of that fund in the top 10 holdings. But again, that is kind of the comparison of a ha old holding 100 stocks versus holding 466 stocks. So now when we look in there, again, you can kind of see VYM that overshadows and kind of runs the same exact thing that we see with the SCHD. They hold Broadcom, they hold Home Depot, Pepsi, Abrev. Most of the ones that are held within the SCHD are also held within the VYM, including ExxonMobil, Chevron, a couple other ones that are really mainstays when it comes to the energy section. So overall, both ETFs have a very, very strong performance. So why do I choose the SCHD over the VYM? This is really where the analytics come in. So turning to Wall Street, the SCHD holds is a hold meaning it's not a buy, it's not a sell, it's not a moderate buy. There's a lot of different variations that we have of this. 42% um, of analysts are on buy, 46 are on hold, which is where we're sitting at. And the average price of this is $80. Now that of course is very important to see. It says it has a potential upside of 8.8% just based on the news. So the VYM on the other side is a moderate buy. So 48% of people are saying buy, 43 are saying hold. And of course, this is at $120. So that again is something to remember because with the VYM, um, what you're putting in there, the, the, the ETF is actually more expensive than what we see with the SCHD. 
So when you start looking above, above and beyond the, the holdings that they have themselves, dividend yield, what looks better? So the SEHD has a higher dividend yield. Now, again, they're holding 100 stocks in comparison to the 466 of the VYM. The SEHD has a dividend yield of 3.6%. Versus a 3.1, which makes it a winner from the dividend perspective. However, there's a lot more to take into account with, with this. Because when you start looking into long-term performance, this is real. It is where it really is a game changer when it comes to these. So not only in addition to those dividend payments, it's important. Now we have to compare them dividend ETFs one versus the other and see what is a higher dividend yield because of course with a dividend yield ETF, that's exactly what we're looking at. So on one side, we have the SCHD, which is yielding a 3.6 dividend yield versus the VYM, which is a 3.1. So with the SCHD only being in those 100 companies makes a big difference and has a pretty decent increase for the dividend yield, making it a winner from the dividend perspective. Now, of course, both of these yields are superior to the broader market. The S&P uh, 500 currently yields 1.6%. So you're getting an extra 2% out of the SCHD right there. Now, of course, SCHD has paid an annual dividend for 10 years in a row, and it has increased its dividend payout for 10 straight years in a row. BYM has paid it for 15 years, and only increased it for 12 of the 15 years that are there. But going above and beyond what exactly this ETF is with the dividends, what kind of growth have we seen the long-term performance with both, both of these ETFs? So in addition to dividend payments, it's important to really compare how these ETFs have grown and how they have performed over time. When you look at the VYM, it has really been respectable three-year annualized return of 13.9%. Over a five-year term, annualized return went to 8.5. And over 10 years, the annualized return is 9.9%. That is right. The VYM is yielding almost a 10% return over 10 years, which is exceptional for a dividend ETF. But this is the turning point where you look at the SEHD. The SEHD has posted a 15.8% annual return in comparison to the VYM that is 13.9%. Year over year, 11.8% over five years and 11.7% over 10 years, which again, when you think of the comparison, when you have the VYM yielding 9.9%, you have the SCHD, which is 11.7, overperforming the VYM over all three timeframes, looking at the year, looking at the five, looking at the 10 year timeframe, it has performed better historically for the last decade. It has paid more dividends in the span of the last decade. It is the exact same price, does hold, again, a little bit less when it comes to diversification and holds a little bit more in some of those high dividend paying um, stocks, which means the SCHD, some of you might say it's kind of a clear winner when the performance overall, and again, I know past performance is not indicative of what it could do in the future, but overall, when you look at the last 10 years, that's pretty much the data that you have available to use and figure out exactly which one's better. So guys, SCHD or the VYM, again, this is a comment that I got, why are we not invested in the VYM versus the SCHD? Definitely wanted to cover this one. The SCHD is paying a high, higher dividend. We have seen better returns over the last decade, and it essentially is filling that same niche of the dividend ETF that we're looking for. So let me know in the comments which one you think is better, and I'll catch you in the next video.